Hello friend, um, okay, so <laughs> I recorded a whole section and I think it might have deleted. Um, I think it might have deleted. So I am just going to start from the beginning. Um, basically in the last video I was talking about um, just God's goodness and I was talking about how you have to decide for yourself whether God is good. Uh, not you have to decide for yourself whether God is good because God is good regardless of whether you believe it or not. But you have to decide for yourself whether you're going to believe it or not, whether you're going to live a life that reflects your belief in God's goodness or not. Um, and for me, that's a lot of what this year has been, just really going back and saying all those things I've said, all those things I talk about, do I actually believe that? Do I believe in that? Um, you know, and just that process. And I truly, truly do. Um, but anyway, and I just wanted to talk about this world in this season and how Jesus is worthy and how he is worthy for you to process things with. He is worthy of your feelings, of your emotions. He He is worthy of, of the hurt. He is worthy to bring that hurt that you feel to. He is so, so worthy. Um, and so I read this thing in my devotion. Um, I think it was, it was the day after I filmed the last video. And so it just says... Um, God has always wanted people to believe in his good heart and his ability to save them. Our belief in God is so important to him that it's how he chooses to make us right with him. Don't mind the noise in the background. Our very salvation depends on heart trust in him. Trust that I can do this, he says. Trust that I have the ability to call into being things that were not. Trust that I am good enough and powerful enough to deem you righteous even though you aren't and when you believe in me i will do what you believe i will i will make you righteous because i truly am that powerful and that good and hebrews 6 is so beautiful it says without faith it's impossible to please god because you actually have to believe that that god is good and that he will do what he says um and I think like everyone has to believe that for themselves and no one can believe that for you hold on no one can believe in God's goodness for you. You have to sit and you have to decide, am I going to believe in God's goodness? And on days when I don't feel like he's good, um, I am I going to come back to him and remind myself of his goodness? Because, you know, we as humans can be so fickle and just, you know, God is good. But then the, uh, the next day you don't feel that he's good, even though he's still good. Um, anyway. I think, it, yeah, so that's just what I wanted to say. And so there's this song by Upper Room, um, and it's called Open the Scroll, and it ref refers to Revelations 5. And I'd read this before, but I didn't realize, like, the, the significance of it um, until until I listened to that song and, like, um, searched up the lyrics, you know, and, like, where's this coming from? Um, and so it's Revelations 5, and um, John, so John um, is having, you know, he's having this vision, which the whole book of revelations is based on um and there's a scroll that has a seal on you know and this angel proclaims like uh who is worthy to open the scroll right um and then it says no one was found um no one on earth or in the heavens was found to be worthy enough um to open the scroll and so john is weeping you know he's weeping because no one is found worthy to open the scroll and one of the i think it's one of the elders they say to him like hey why are you weeping um and he says you know like no or, or basically he's weeping because no one is worthy to open the scroll um but they say no there is one who's worthy and it refers to the lamb who is jesus right and only jesus can open the scroll um and so it's just only he is worthy. And so that same Jesus, the Jesus who died on the cross for you, um, and the Jesus who rose again, who didn't just stay dead, he is worthy to process. He is worth um, everything you're afraid to leave behind. And for me, that's what a, a big chunk of this year was, really sitting and saying, do I believe this? And am I willing to let it all go? You know, Luke 14, 33, I think, um, it says, uh, he who, um, the one or the one who doesn't leave it all behind cannot be my disciple. And that verse hits me every time because for me, like I wanted to hold on to, onto things that I knew that God was calling me to let go onto, onto even, you know, it sounds, it might sound too small, but onto things like series, um, 
onto onto my way of doing things, onto my control. Um, control is a big one. And so I wanted to hold onto that and to be king over that area of my life. But I can only, there's only room for one. There's only room for one God. You know, there's only room for God. And um, there's no room for God and Zoe um, in being king over my life. And so I, or being master of my life. And so I had to choose for myself. Who am I going to believe in? Who is going to be the authority in my life? Um, you know, and I really, really had to believe that for myself. Um, and so, yeah, and I think it's just, it's something, you know, and I want, I have to say, like, I mean, this is not something I'm perfect at. This is not something I have done perfectly. You know, there are days that I don't, that I don't feel God's goodness. But in, in those moments, I have to remind myself of his goodness, you know, remind my heart, remind my mind, remind my soul that, hey, Zoe, like, he is so, so good and he is worthy for you to lay it all down um, at his feet. And so I really, really, I am such a strong believer um, in being so honest with God. I think, you know, like a lot of times, and I used to do this as well, people shy away from being honest. But if you're struggling with someone, with something like be honest, honest with him if if you don't feel that he's good in that moment be honest with him ask him ask him to show you his goodness you know you can ask for that um and he truly does deliver um and so anyway then yesterday i read malachi which i thought was such a cool verse the bible is so full of verses that like i didn't realize were there but are there um and just it's malachi 3 uh two and three and it just says but who can enjoy the day of his coming who can stand when he appears for he will be like a refiner's fire or a launder's soap launderer's soap <laughs> um he will sit as a refiner and purify of silver he will purify the levites and refine them like gold and silver um and so it's just talking about uh the the children of israel they had get they, they had gotten to a point where um, they were giving the Lord, you know, not giving him fully their first fruits and their tithes and giving him ble- blemish, you know, like sheeps and, and blemished offerings. Um, and it just talks about like God is a purifier, you know, um, and with us, the same thing applies. He purifies us and he refines us, you know, like launder soap, you know, I'm assuming like a, lawn, a person who does laundry not a launderer money launderer um but that that cleans you know purifying silver and refining silver it cleans um and so that's the other thing i just wanted to mention and so in that in sitting with him in processing with him and crying with him and you know shouting whatever it is in reading your word like that is a process of refining um and of purification and yeah and you just because none of this can happen if you don't believe he's good if you don't believe god is good you're not going to trust him with your heart you're not going to trust him with your emotions um you're not going to trust him with processing you're not going to trust him with any of it and so that's what it's it's come down to and i have been so so challenged in that and do i truly believe god is good um and is that reflected in my actions when you are disobedient that comes from a um from a love problem right um it there's a verse i'll put it on but that says the one who loves me will obey me um and so if you're not obeying that comes from a love problem um and so yeah i just really wanted to talk about that and you know life is not always (laughs) highs and lows sometimes you're in wilderness seasons and that's that's um you know it says that trust me i'll take care of you here um in the wilderness that was from my devotion which is what sparked this whole video so just trust me that i'll take care of you here in the wilderness and if you feel like you're in a wilderness season if you know it's not a high mountain top it's not a valley low but it's this time where it just feels like things you know it's a hard season the wilderness is hard right it's the sun beats down and this is spiritually speaking not actually living in a wilderness um you know and it's hard to keep walking because you're tired and the sun is beating down and then you find shelter and you find water um but then you have to keep on going you can't stay there you know and so it's kind of like moments of of such refreshingness and then it's hard and it's hard and you keep going and you keep going so that's what i mean when i say wilderness season um 
and just going back to the children of israel israel um that's what that quote was referring to trust me that i'll take care of you here in the wilderness was with them right and they had to trust that god would take care of them in the wilderness that the manna that he that because the manna was only for the day except for you know covering the sabbath day um but that manna was only for that day um and if they kept it longer than that it would go bad and so you have to trust that god will provide manna for today um and then he'll provide manna for tomorrow and it's that daily bread right that okay just enough for today let's get through today all right let's get through the next day and that's what a wilderness season is so i just wanted to encourage you firstly that Jesus is so so worthy and even if you don't feel that way um you can still remind yourself of that truth secondly it's just that there are those wilderness seasons those seasons that are just hard um and even in those uh he is still God and he is still good and there is something that you'll learn in the wilderness that you can't learn in the valley in or in the mountaintops or in the plateau um you know that you need to learn in the wilderness and it's interesting because when the children of Israel were in the wilderness God was more interested in the process that their hearts were going through than than their destination you know he wanted their hearts right because before they could get to the promised land um and so he he refines our hearts he works on our hearts he purifies um, and the biggest thing i want to say firstly is that jesus is worthy he is so so worthy you can trust him friend you really can trust him with your heart and your emotions and the hurt you feel or the burdens you feel but you have to decide for that for yourself i can't decide for you your mom can't decide for you your siblings your pastor your boyfriend your husband whatever it is um your best friend they can't decide for you it has to be a decision that you make for yourself and once you decide that i'm not saying it gets easier um but at least you can run to him your daily bread to the one who refines to someone who is worthy to jesus who holds your heart so preciously um and he you and he is worthy and when you don't feel his goodness you can remind yourself of that um yeah and it's not always easy but it definitely is so so worth it um and so yeah that's that's all i have for you today um i hope you are having a lovely day and yeah i will see you in the next video i really really do hope that you know you're having a lovely day i know things can get hard sometimes and things have been quite hard um it hasn't been a po- easy like year and a half um but friend god is so so good um and you have to believe that for yourself all right bye